Well, hello and welcome to our very last session of uh, 2022 and beyond, our webinar series on behalf of the Consumer Healthcare Training Academy, where we were really looking at what are some of the trends and the, and changes that we have experienced in the last year that will impact our businesses in 2022. Um, so, uh, Dave, it's been a really amazing series, hasn't it? It's been fantastic. You know, um, I know that, uh, well, you've recently been back and forth to the UK, but, you know, we've sort of been locked in, our, in Thailand for you and me down here in Sydney. I've been doing everything from this bedroom, uh, working from this bedroom for a year. <laughs> um, but that's pretty symbolic of the world of, of 2021 and what we've been going through. And then what's been really interesting is how things have evolved over the last mm. 12 months as we've been talking to all these experts. And mm. what's really interest, been interesting to me, Steve, is we actually haven't talked much about COVID directly no, um, indeed. with any of these experts. But what we've been doing is exploring, I think, some big themes that COVID environment have made more important than ever. Um, and so that's been sort of interesting how we've managed by a hook or by crook to do that. Indeed, indeed. And but first of all, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of the experts that have joined us on this series, because we've really uh, had some very insightful uh, conversations. And if we move on to the next slide, please, we can really see uh, some of the elements that we really discussed. And what was really interesting here is that we didn't take a very traditional approach to healthcare. We looked at some very, very diverse areas such as mental wellness and healthy aging, and also looking at uh, the way that we would be developing uh, our own marketeers into the future uh, with our guests uh, such as Michelle and Kim. Um, so it was really, I hope, uh, something that was really stimulating and insightful and something that goes beyond what we would normally be talking about in the industry. Exactly. You know, I think it was actually sort of fortunate. We started off with Alison, the very first session, uh, talking about collaboration, because in a sense, you know, just listening to you and I talk to each other, fascinating as you and I might find it. Uh, what's really always interesting with our, our sessions, but, you know, any of the podcasts that have been so popularized in the last couple of years around the world is hearing different people and different points of view and getting, getting different points of view on, on similar subjects. And we've been really lucky to get this wide range of people to, to help us out and join those discussions. Yeah, indeed. So, Dave, what, what really stood out for you in this last uh, year in terms of the topics that we discussed? What really, really sparkled and really got your, uh, got your inspiration going? Well, I think one of the subjects that really struck me was, was I'm going to say caregiving. And, and you know, mm -hmm. yeah, um, Debbie Howard actually did a fantastic session with, with us talking about caregiving from, I guess, the corporate point of view, uh, and what she was talking about was the importance of for employers and professionals to understand that their staff, et cetera, mm. are, are going to be facing increasing hardships about caregiving with because of aging population, because of the pandemic, et cetera, et cetera. And more and more of the people that work for us or with us, we need to take into consideration. But, you know, what was interesting was, well, she really focused on and brought alive for us the, su the subject and the, and the word caregiving. And, mm. and um, look, Steve, you know, you've worked in the sort of health or wellness space for a long, long time, right? And we use the word caregiving or caring, but that was really brought at home what that means yeah. and, and how it's changing. But what I found interesting is that some of our other speakers actually touched on that as well, you know. Uh, and we'll come back to, you know, some of the other issues. But, you know, our very last session with Trevor, mm. although Trevor was actually talking about self-care, but that was caregiving as well, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and this whole aspect, and I think this is one of the great things that's come alive in, in 21, 20, uh, you know, 2021, because of the pandemic, because of COVID, has been caring, whether it's yeah. caring for others or caring for yourself. Um, and so rethinking those things, but thinking of them particularly from the point of view of both the company and the, yeah. the customer 
and, and the consumer, right? Yeah. And looking at it from different perspectives as, as we've managed to do. I think that's been really interesting. Yeah. No, really interesting. And you touch on, on, on Trevor's uh, uh, webinar on self-care. So I think with Debbie and Trevor, we really are starting to redefine care when it comes to healthcare. And that's really interesting. I mean, pre previously, the parochial view was the industry and the healthcare professionals would be the ones that delivered care. Mm. But it's increasingly clear that we need to be starting to think about self-care, the way that we deliver care to ourselves in a, a healthcare environment, and also the way that we as individuals deliver care to others. Um, we have aging populations, and I know we'll talk a little bit uh, more about that in, uh, in a few minutes, but the way that now families are starting to consider caring for their relatives as they age and ensuring mm. that we're able to deliver care, not only through a professional way, but also personally. And that I thought was very inspiring. Yeah, very much so. Um, I, I think that's, you've really hit the point there, which is that a lot of the work that we end up doing with different companies in the broad health and wellness space, I know that I personally, you know, probably when we started this series, the beginning of last mm -hmm. year, uh, you know, I was thinking about caring in terms of, you know, pharmacists and, and pharmaceutical companies, if you like, and, and the other professionals in those giant spheres. But now after, you know, actually two years of doing the, yeah. the, the, this series, you know, it's a much broader brief in terms of caring and about everybody's involved in the caring business. And, mm. and we've all had to go through that, right? I mean, mm. I literally, literally today, I was supposed to have lunch with an old, old friend of mine. Oh, yes. But he lives, but he lives about 70 kilometers from where I am. He lives way, way, way on the outskirts of Sydney. And at the last minute, he rang and said, look, my mother and my mother-in-law, but two ladies in their 80s are coming tomorrow to stay for Christmas. I don't think I want to risk mm. having lunch with you, Dave, because that means traveling around the city. And I just, you know, it's not worth the risk anymore. Um, and I think that's just, and we all take it for granted. You know, you, yeah, it's, oh yeah, no, no worries, Paul. See you in the new year, right? Because that's the way the world has changed. That, you know, yeah. we're sort of conscious of what, everything we're doing is affecting somebody else or could be. Indeed. So that's been really interesting, right? Indeed, very but, uh, much so. I, another aspect of caring and that really came up was when we had early in the year that session with Max and, you know, Dr. Max was explaining in details what it is that as we get older, our bodies need, right? Yeah. And, you know, really graphically, uh, had some fantastic charts, which I have to admit that I've borrowed bits and, and been using <laughs> bits in other in other I'm sure he won't and presentations. Yeah. And oh, you know, with due credit, because he really opened my eyes. You know, I've always been aware of the fact that you need to change your diet as you age and you need to exercise, but really getting the nuts and bolts of yeah. how we're care how well how guys like you and I, in our, you know, in our early sixties are going to take care of each other, but how. We're taking care as you have been just recently taking care of your yeah. mother in her 80s, right? And yeah. how so many people today are now tied in because of this aging population, or as I refer to it, the new life builders. All that population that's sort of 65 plus is just expanding, mm. expanding, expanding. And that means that more and more of us have to become more and more aware of how we're going to help care for those people or how they are going to care for themselves. Yeah. And part yeah. of that is not just the things we think about, which is, you know, good diet, bit of exercise, mm. but, you know, the need for supplements, the need for sp yeah. more specific aids to mm. fend off some of the aging process yeah. or, you know, or no. make it easy to age well. Yeah. No, indeed. And I think that sort of uh, really, it wasn't just about diet, though, was it? It was also about looking at different solutions, really looking holistically at the person and at caring for the person through diet, lifestyle, mental awareness, uh, mental health, and uh, uh, really looking very much at all of the different kinds of solutions that we could empower individuals with. 
because uh, as I mentioned many times during the series, the best medicine is the individual that is informed, empowered, and inspired. And uh, in fact, all of our presenters really uh, uh, prove that. Care is not just a one-way street. Care comes through multiple solutions, and one of which, and most important, I would say, is the inspiration and, by connection, the mental wellness of individuals. Right. Uh, it's so right. much the power of positive mental wellness has such an impact on our bodies. And this is something really, really important that both Ophelia Young and Melissa Gale talked about, one in a very macro way and the other very much in a very personal one-to-one -one, uh, manner. No, exactly. And, and, and let's not forget, we also had that great session on, on mental health with uh, Vern and-, and, and uh, Of course, Katie. yes, and Katie, um, yes. And, and all of those sessions, and it was, and again, I think it was more accidental than on purpose because folks, we, we don't plan exactly 12 months ahead who we're gonna to talk to, but sort of, who we find interesting and becomes available, right? Um, but we've ended up with, you know, a number of these sessions looking at aspects about mental health that I found really interesting. You know, right. Ophelia early on in the year really framed the way in which the wellness industry is rethinking mental health. Mm. And she's been deeply involved in this global research to just figure out what is the monetary value of the mental health yeah, indeed. and mental wellness business. And just for anybody that's interested, um, we explained back in February um, that uh, Ophelia works for the Global Wellness Institute. Um, she is just co-authored a brand new global study into what the wellness industry globally is about, oh. uh, how much it's worth, um, and in particular, how it's recovering from the COVID period. So they're actually, it's interesting because their latest report suggests that the va total value of the global wellness industry is about the same as it was when COVID started. Now, the mm -hmm. reason for that is because a lot of areas like wellness tourism have collapsed, right? Mm -hmm. um, but in all that period, what they've seen is that mental wellness has been the fastest growing area of the wellness world because not surprisingly, a lot of us have been affected or know people have been affected and have yep. had to rethink what is our approach to Staying strong, yeah. as the phrase goes, right? Uh, you know how to how to cope with, you know, uh, quarantine, yeah. as we were just discussing off air, you know, and all those sorts of things, um, and, and relatives, and how to get over the fact that we've all been touched, you know, some of us more than others, with yeah. people we know, unfortunately, you know, dying or being seriously Indeed. ill, and then, you know, how to look yeah. forward. I mean, one of the interesting things I think Melissa in particular was very good about looking forward. Um, and about the fact that yes, mental health and, and mental wellness is um, something that we have to learn to live and cope with. But the most important thing is to live and cope with it so that you're getting a positive outcome and looking forward yes. to tomorrow. And that's yes. been really, really powerful and interesting. Yeah, yeah. And I, cer I certainly predict that mental wellness will continue to be a huge part of uh, uh, care in the future. And I think it, uh, it behoves us as an industry to ensure that whatever solutions that we are offering are also uh, able to support us in terms of our mental wellness and our mental health. Um, so, uh, and many of these solutions will be free. Uh, they will be advice, there will be uh, ways of, uh, of thinking, they will be different uh, tips and techniques. And it's something that I think is going to be an expectation from uh, individuals as they are looking for advice on how to cope with a particular condition or how to even prevent uh, and maintain their wellness they'll be looking for advice from the industry who they would see as experts in being able to also give advice about mental wellness. Exactly, exactly. And I think, again, you know, to your point about if, if the wellness and the health industry is, going, is stepping forward and marketers in that industry are stepping forward, then a, 
what we're going to see is increasing focus on empowering people to understand yes. for themselves, right? And the information they're provided. And while Dr. Google, and I think every one of our speakers mentioned Dr. Google in some way, Dr. Google is great, but as we've seen in, in uh, again over the last 18 months, information you receive on the internet, you know, you've got to put a, a, a bit of a filter on it. And so mm -hmm. I think some of our some of our guests have been very good at helping us understand maybe what some yeah. of the filters we'd have to put on those things. Exactly. And it's uh, it was really interesting. It was mentioned uh, by Trevor that uh, really there's huge percentage of people who really don't understand the medicines and the instructions, what we might call healthcare literacy. Um, and that is our responsibility as an industry to be able to uh, communicate in a way that people understand, because if they don't understand, certainly they won't believe in what they're doing, they won't be inspired by it, and therefore they will risk actually their condition getting worse or indeed, uh, uh, you know, not getting better. And uh, uh, then we've got a real issue with those individuals and uh, the healthcare outcomes that we're, uh, we're being uh, trusted to deliver for them. So even something as simple as ensuring that our instructions are uh, the way our products are working, the reason to believe why this product works is clear, uh, that in itself will build trust, which will bring more confidence, which will have a positive impact also on the mental wellness and therefore the health, uh, the physical health of that individual. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think we actually, when we talked to Michelle about the modern mm. growth playbook, I think yes. we talked about this in some detail and about the fact that modern marketers are going to have to rethink the way they supply information, but also mm -hmm. maybe the way they integrate their own products and their own services with others, right? Mm. And so, you know, we can't do things in isolation. And while each of our speakers has an area of expertise, the greatest value yeah. is when you look across what you learn from these things. Yeah. And it's the same for the individual person out on the street or, you know, sitting, yeah. sitting on their couch watching this you need marketers need to be thinking about their lives holistically um, yeah. and the information they need. And it might be, look, you know, this is my story about my coffee, <laughs> um, but I need to tell you a bit more about what's the best thing to eat with the coffee and yeah. what, you know, what other, maybe you need to drink some water with the coffee uh, yeah. as well. You know, and that, all that, we need more of that sort of overlaying sort of information made simple yeah. so that people can, live a better holistic life. Yeah. No, it, it's really interesting. I think maybe we should start talking more about uh, people's lives rather than the moments of consumption, which is what we as traditionally as, as marketers, we, we tend to focus. But that brings yes, with it exactly. big responsibility. It brings with it the responsibility to understand people holistically and not just as body parts or different conditions and that is yes. a real change of mindset and I think that's something we're going to have to really learn and Michelle really gave a really good uh, steer towards us as marketeers not to try to be everything to everyone but to really focus on the high value customers the high value which is of course value to us as an industry and a brand but I think more holistically the highest value customers that where we can deliver also the best mm. value to them. And that actually is a really important point. It means really focusing and targeting on exactly who we want to talk to, who we want to inspire, because in many ways, we're all very different. We, we receive information in different ways. We progress, we process that information in different ways. And therefore, if we tried as an industry to talk to everyone, then we end up delivering a very generic and bland message. Yeah, no, no exactly, exactly. Yeah. And if I could just make one last plug, uh, it would be for the discussion we had with Kim Walker from Appraise. Uh, oh, absolutely. Which, let's all be, all be open. Well, you and I both deal with Kim. You, 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 know, you deal with Kim a lot and, and you, know, you do Appraise work. But the important thing there, the message I would take out of that was that, part of the way in which we're going to get the message across 
better is when yeah. the clients and their agencies of whatever type yeah. that may be, you know, their messaging uh, partners, work together better on a brief that makes it simple and easy to understand what is the core messages we want people to understand. Um, and why is the message going to be relevant in their whole lives and not just as, you know, an immediate solution to an immediate problem, but yeah. Right. Because then you're, you know, when the agencies and the, and the, and the clients are coming together on that, then you're going to get better, more holistic messaging. You're going to get messaging that actually affects Indeed. people's lives and, and is more yep. effective. Yeah. Indeed. And that, of course, that uh, closes the loop, doesn't it, Dave? Because it goes back to what Alison was saying right at the beginning of the year, which is collaboration. So yes. really, as an industry, to stop being funnel driven and looking wider at who are the different partners that you are working with or could work with to that could help us to deliver messages and solutions to our uh, communities in a much faster, more effective, more efficient way. And uh, exactly as you said, our our communication agencies, our digital agencies, our point of sale agencies, our customers, our retail customers, our prof healthcare professionals, all of these are strategic partners that where collaboration with them will certainly help to improve the healthcare outcomes of our communities. It is, it is, that's, that's the way forward. Fantastic. So look. Uh, yes. Maybe if we just go, I, I just wanted to pull up the next chart and just uh, say yes. a deep thank you again to uh, all of our guests um, that we've had over the last uh, 12 months. Uh, and of course, for the, the 12 months before that, because we had some fantastic uh, discussions in the year before. But, you know, uh, Alison, Ophelia, Max, Debbie, uh, Katie, Vernon, Inez, uh, Melissa, Kim, Michelle, Trevor. Uh, Trevor's always a regular with us and uh, great fun. Uh, so Very thanks to all fun. of them. Thanks to all of them for great discussions, uh, being flexible enough to do the discussions at times that we needed to get done because some of these people yeah. were doing it from the States, from the, U the UK, from Europe, um, as well as from different parts of Asia. So, you know, a truly global a group of people. Indeed. So a big thank you uh, for them of giving up their time, preparing their presentation, but most importantly, sharing their insights and their views in terms of how we can help improve uh, the healthcare outcomes of our communities in 2022 and beyond. Um, and of course, we're at the end of 2021. We are about to enter 2022. And we want to, of course, continue to inspire our communities. Uh, and uh, to do that, as we've uh, discussed earlier on, we would like to actually uh, take a more holistic view. Um, as marketeers, we've often remained at a high level of insight and understanding about people. Um, as we discussed uh, in Trevor's uh, webinar on self-care, we've tended to be very parochial. We look at how to sell products, but not so much on how to add value to people's lives, uh, how to get more engaged with people so that we can really inspire them. So we'd like to open up the topic and uh, to talk a little bit about a topic that's been very close to both our hearts, especially yours, Dave, uh, which is what really matters to people. Yeah, yeah, it's a very deep affiliation of mine. Um, I was just thinking uh, before we came to record this today, back in 1998, I got asked at a, an advertising industry conference in Asia to give a keynote address. And my subject was, please don't call them consumers, call them people. And what I, what I did then was to talk about my frustrations that in my years, up to that point, my years in the advertising industry, was that too many of my partners in the agency, uh, too many of my competitors at other agencies, and certainly too many of the clients in the marketing departments were always focused when they would talk about consumers. But what they meant was, when Nescafe talked about a consumer, they meant somebody that they meant not when somebody's drinking their coffee, they meant, well, the person. 
And I keep mm -hmm. on saying, but why don't you talk about their whole lives? Mm -hmm. Coffee is a small part of their life, just as orange juice is a small part of your life or your shoes are a small part of your life, right? Um, and what we need to be doing as clever marketers is thinking about people's lives in general and finding out what really matters to people and then figuring out how our product or service can help them with what matters, right? Um, it's not about drinking this particular product or you know, using this particular piece of software. It's about their lives and what they want to do uh, and what matters to them and what hurts and what is, brings them pleasure and joy and then figuring out how you can be part of that. Um, yes. And so I think this new uh, series that we're about to start will be really uh, interesting and powerful as we bring together uh, people with a different point of view and, and, and try to get some sense around this idea of what matters to people. Yeah. So again, we're going to stop calling us consumers. We're going to start really referring to people and what matters to us as people in our lives. So we hope that this is not only going to give you great insights, but also uh, very practically, we would like to link this with ideas that we can either develop into different solutions, products, communication uh, that will influence the health and happiness of our communities. So something a little bit different, something that's going to go deeper into the emotions and the values and beliefs of individuals, but that can be then transitioned into how we can come up with real holistically based solutions that will make a difference. And that's going to be, I think, really interesting. And uh, I can't wait for that to be happening. So on behalf of uh, Dave and myself, and the whole of the team at the Consumer Healthcare Training Academy, I want to say a big thank you and wish you a very peaceful and healthy holiday period and just an amazing new year. Uh, looking forward to 2022 and looking forward to some great insights uh, that will help us to improve the health and happiness of our communities going forward. So thank you so much and wishing you all the best. Bye now. Happy holidays. Cheers.